name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to another episode of my Sunday Sewing Catch Up. Um, I did miss, I think it was just last weekend that I missed because it was Ruby's birthday. Um, and I did put a post over on my community tab um, just to say that I wasn't going to be filming any videos because uh, we had a weekend of celebrations. And I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that took the time to wish Ruby a happy birthday. I did read all the messages to her and you really made her birthday weekend. So thank you so much for being so kind. Uh, we had a really lovely weekend. Um, it was just the four of us. Uh, we did pop round and see Nanny and Grandad, but the celebrations were just the four of us. Um, Ruby's autistic and she does find it quite difficult when there are lots and lots of people around. So we tend to celebrate just the four of us and it was really lovely. We had a really nice weekend. Um, but yeah, thank you for all the lovely birthday messages for her. Um, you really made her day. She has a very small circle of friends, like a couple of really close friends and that's about it. So um, it really made her weekend getting lots and lots of birthday messages from other people. So thank you. So I am back with another episode of my Sunday Sewing Catch Up. We're on episode 54. As usual, I've got a roundup of some fabric. I've got a pattern I want to share with you. I've got some makes and I've got some plans as well. Um, so before I dive into all of that, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. And this is something that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. I shared it in the last Sunday Sewing Catch Up to say that it was nearly finished. I just had a few other things that I needed to do to it. So it's the new pattern by Tilly and the Buttons, which is the Marnie dress. So you can sew it as a dress or you can sew it as a blouse. Um, I've had lots and lots of fun sort of patchworking um, different gingham fabrics together that I had in my stash. All of these gingham fabrics were from Abacan Fabrics and I've pieced them all together using little scraps and offcuts. So I've got all the different colours of the rainbow. I love doing that sort of thing um, and just eking out all of the scrap pieces of fabric that I've got. And the Marnie's brilliant for using up small pieces of fabric because you've got so many different pieces on the Marnie. Um, I've made the dress and I will put pictures in of me wearing the dress. Um, but it's got this gorgeous ruffle. You've got a yoke at the front and then you've got a yoke at the back. And then the ruffle goes all the way around to here. It's a really interesting construction because you've got this um, sort of panel at the front which is gathered into the yoke. And then you've got these side panels. So I've gone for green gingham for the side panels and here. And then you've got another panel here going around the back um, and another panel here going around the back, which is a purple gingham. And then the same as the front with this pink, I've got a panel going down the back, which is blue. And then the sleeves are two sections. So I've gone for red gingham and then I've got yellow gingham. And you can see that it's gathered into that gingham here. And then you've got that really voluminous sleeve at the end too. Um, I really love it. It's super comfortable. It finishes with... Um, by binding around the neckline and then you've got like a rouleau loop on the back. I don't know if you can see that. And then a button. Um, so that is my version. I had almost finished it in my last Sunday Sewing Catch Up but I managed to get it finished. Um, and I'm wearing it today. It's a lovely sunny day in London. And I've got it on. And then I've got it paired with my uh, Smile and Make uh, Look for Rainbows necklace which I absolutely love with that gorgeous rainbow and the clouds and the raindrops and that lovely sunshine. I just love how it sparkles and it goes perfectly with the Rainbow Marnie. So that is one of the first things that I've actually got finished off in the last couple of weeks. Um, I showed you some t-shirts last time as well that I've been sewing and I have managed to hem those t-shirts and I had some Hubie leggings that I needed to hem. So I finished those. I'll just grab the t-shirts. So these t-shirts were finished. I just had to hem the sleeves and hem the t-shirt and top stitch uh, the neckband so it was this gorgeous uh, it was Tilly the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt with this beautiful fabric I got from Felicity Fabrics so that's completely finished now and I've actually worn it I wore it under some dungarees and then I had the Tilly and the Buttons Freya jumper which was completely finished um, again I just had to top stitch the neckband and then I needed to hem the sleeves and also um, hem the bottom which is what I've done so I'll put some pictures in of me wearing both of those and then I had some khaki green cotton jersey that I got as part of a bundle from Felicity Fabrics with the other two fabrics I've already shared and I wanted to turn this into a Southbank sweater so a Nina Lee Southbank sweater and that's exactly what I've done so here it is it was cut out ready to go but I just hadn't sewn it and um, so it's just the cropped version but I've put the hem band on and then it's got that lovely deep collar um and the hem uh the the not hem the cuffs on the sleeves as well 
Uh, so I'm really pleased I've got that finished. I think that's going to really add to my autumn wardrobe along with the Freya and the Tabitha t-shirt as well. So nice and snuggly and cosy makes. Um, and then I had two Anna Allen Anthea blouses cut out and I wanted to have a go at sewing those up. And I'm pleased to say that I have been able to sew both of them and I've worn one of them already. Um, again, with dungarees. I'm loving wearing like t-shirts and blouses underneath dungarees. So... The first one is using this absolutely gorgeous Pigeon Wishes fabric. Sorry, the buttons are actually undone. Um, and it's green and blue and white. The flowers are blue uh, with green in the background and then white. I love that voluminous sleeve. I think it's gorgeous. An adjustment I make to my Anthea blouses is you're supposed to finish it with a cuff, but I tend to finish it with elastic. It's still quite loose, um, but I just like having that elastic. It sort of gathers it in ever so slightly. And then I've just gone for plain blue buttons, which kind of blend in very nicely. I wore this with a pair of, I think it was black dungarees. And I went on a training course um, as part of work. And when I was on the training course, just waiting for it to start, the lady that um, ran the training course came over to say hello. And she said, oh, I absolutely love your blouse. Did you make it? So I said, yes, I made it. Um, and we talked about the pattern and it turned out that the lady also sewed and she recognised the pattern and that's why she wanted to come over and say hello. And then she asked me where I got the fabric so I could tell her I got it from Hey So Sister, which is one of my favourite places to buy fabric um, and that it was a Pigeon Wishes fabric. Um, she absolutely fell in love with the fabric, but I think it's sold out everywhere. Um, but it was a really enjoyable start to a training course, being able to talk about sewing for 10 minutes. Um, and I really enjoyed wearing this blouse. I could just really imagine it going really well with a pair of dungarees. So I'm pleased I got that one finished. And then the other one was using some fabric I've had in my stash for a good couple of years now. I bought it from Sister Mintaka and it's got like a space themed um, print all over it. And here it is. Again, the button's undone where I've just been trying it on. Um, so yeah, it's in this gorgeous like charcoal gray um sort of fabric it's got kind of sort of um sheen to it i think it was a cotton lawn and then it's got a uh, space print all over it which i absolutely love i've got a couple of children in my class that absolutely love space and i know they're going to love it when i wear this blouse to work and um, so it's the anna allen anthea blouse i've got the puff sleeve and again i've just finished this with elastic that's just my preferred way to finish the sleeve um the neckline is finished with bias binding so i've just used the same fabric and then you've got buttons that go all the way down the centre front. It's a really lovely blouse pattern. I've made quite a few of the Anthea blouses now. Um, I love the shape. I love the neckline. I love the poofy sleeves. And then the hem is ever so slightly curved. And I really love that about the blouse as well. And it goes with so many different things that I've got in my wardrobe. So I'm really pleased that I've managed to get those two finished. And again, I'll put pictures in so you can see what they both look like on me. And then the other two things that I've been sewing up were things that I wasn't planning to get sewn up, but I'm really glad that I did sew them because the weather turned and we had a couple of really chilly days. So I ended up wearing both of these to work this week. Um, and it is using a pattern that I've already talked about. So the Nina Lee Southbank sweater. And I did a swap of the Sew Heli Jane uh, waffle knit fabric. So I got the navy colourway and I did a swap um, to get the green colourway. And I've cut it out to sew up Ruby a dressing gown, a cropped dressing gown. And then I had enough of this fabric to sew myself a Nina Lee Southbank sweater dress. And I have worn this to work already uh, just with navy tights and um, my Converse. And it was so comfortable to wear. I felt so lovely and snuggly and warm. So it's exactly the same as the sweater that I've sewn up. But it's the dress version, so it's obviously much, much longer. And then you've got that hem band on the bottom. And then you've got the cuffs and you've got the collar as well. Um, and it was a really perfect use of this fabric um, and just really, really comfortable to wear as well. And perfect for being at work with the children. Um, so I put pictures in of me wearing this one. I'm really pleased that I've sewn that up and um, made really good use of that fabric. And I think this is going to be a really great autumnal um, sort of garment for my wardrobe. And then the other one that I sewed up was using that lovely jacquard knit fabric that I got from Hey so Sister with the apples all over it. I ummed and ahed about whether I should use that for a cardigan or whether I should just sew up a jumper. And in the end, I had enough to sew up the dress. So I thought I might as well use all of the fabric and turn it into a lovely, cosy, snuggly dress. I think the thing that was putting me off turning it into a dress originally was the fact that it was 
on a cream background and I'm quite messy. I do tend to spill things down myself when I'm at work. I tend to get paint and glue and all sorts all over me too. So that kind of put me off making a dress. But I don't teach in class on a Thursday and a Friday. I'm out of class um, with various sort of leadership responsibilities. So I knew I'd be able to wear this perhaps on a Thursday or a Friday and not get quite so messy. So I did. I wore it to work um, on Friday. And I'm so pleased that I decided to go for the South Bank um, sweater dress. It's the perfect kind of oversize without being too um, sort of baggy. And it's also the perfect pattern for a really snuggly, cozy, um, like snuggly, I know I've said snuggly like a million times, but it really is snuggly and warm to wear. And it was just perfect to wear the other day when it was really cold and windy. Uh, so here it is. So you've got that lovely collar and the cuffs. And then it's the sweater dress and then you've got the hem band on the bottom. It was absolutely just the most coziest thing to wear. I absolutely loved wearing it and I think I'm so pleased that I've managed to use all of that gorgeous fabric. I'll put pictures in of me wearing it but honestly it was the coziest thing I've ever worn to work. Um, I didn't feel too hot because I was worried this fabric's quite thick but it wasn't, I, you know, I didn't feel too hot. Sorry, my dress got caught on the chair. I didn't feel sort of overheated at any point in the day. It was just the right level of like snuggleness. Um, so I'm really pleased with that one as well. So that was everything that I've been sewing up. A couple of things like the Marnie and the t-shirts, they'd been almost finished. I just had to hem the uh, Freya top and the Tabitha t-shirt. This one, I can't remember how far I'd got, but I had a few little bits to go with sewing this up. I think I had the sleeves to insert, I think I had the back to finish and um, the hem to finish as well. But the other things I hadn't started, I'd just cut them out ready to go. And I've always got a great big box of projects cut out and ready to go because cutting out is my least favourite sewing task. So I tend to batch cut things and then I'll always have something in like a zip bag so I can just pick it up and have a go at sewing it. Um, and I just prefer to work that way. Sometimes it does mean that I'll have things that I cut out for the summer that I don't quite get around to sewing up but I'll just sew those up when the weather starts to get warm again. So on to some fabric. I have had some fabric um, in the post over the last couple of weeks. I'm waiting for some fabric to arrive from First for Fabrics, so I'll talk about that at the end. But I've got some fabric from Stitch and Ink that arrived, um, and they posted that they had the last remnant piece of this really fun Halloween fabric. And I am thinking about Halloween projects at the moment. Um, so they had this remnant piece of cotton poplin. I absolutely love it. I love those colours that's very retro. It's got the daisies all over it. And then I really love the subtlety of the Halloween where you've got the bats and the cats and you've got some spiders, uh, the raven, um, you've got the spider's webs. And I'm going to turn this into either the Marnie blouse or the Anna Allen Anthea blouse um, because it was only a remnant piece, I think. It might be just about a metre of fabric, so I might have enough, because it looks quite wide, I might have enough to be able to sew up the um, Anthea blouse. It just depends on the sleeve pattern piece. Otherwise, this will get turned into a sagebrush top if I don't have enough for the Marnie blouse or the Anthea blouse. But it's definitely going to become a top of some sort, and I can just see this going really nicely with my um, dungarees, so the Helen's Closet Yanta overalls are my favourite dungarees. I've got black pair, I've got a green pair, and I just think this fabric would go perfectly with those dungarees. So I've definitely got firm plans for that one. And then I've wanted this peachy fabric. Again, it's a cotton poplin, but I've wanted this for ages. And I know it's not a very autumnal or winter type of fabric, but I've wanted this for ages and I was getting the Halloween remnant and I thought, actually, I'm just going to get some of this too. I absolutely love it. I love that peachy sort of background. I love the peachy design with these cute sort of little berries and the flowers as well. I have no idea what I'm going to turn it into. Um, if I open it up, you can see it's not got a huge amount of drape because it's a cotton poplin. Um, but I just really loved the design and I've gone to put it in my basket so many times that I thought actually yes I am going to get it and um, so it's got a little bit of drape not a huge amount of movement um so I don't really know what I'm going to turn this into I think it's probably going to go into my stash until we get back into the spring or summertime when I think I'll probably feel a bit of in, um 
like I'll probably feel a little bit more inspired to turn it into something. But yeah, I love it. I'm just not sure what I'm going to turn it into yet. I was worried that they weren't going to get any of this uh, back in stock, so I snapped it up. So that was all my fabrics from Stitch and Ink. And then you might have seen, because a couple of people messaged me on Instagram, Fabric Godmother had the most gorgeous um, puffer jacket fabrics in stock. So they had it in the lilac colorway and they had it in the sort of baby pink colorway. I hesitated for a couple of days and then I shared on my stories um, that I was gonna treat myself to some of the fabric. I'd had a really tricky week with lots of things going on outside of work. Um, so I was gonna treat myself to some fabric um, so that I can turn it into a puffer jacket in the autumn half term, which is in a couple of weeks. And I wasn't sure which colorway to go for. So I shared in my stories, the lilac or the pink and asked for people to vote. And then Josie messaged me to say that actually the lilac had sold out and they only had a small amount of the pink. So I went very quickly to their website and I ordered the pink colorway of this amazing quilted puffer jacket fabric. I just think it's so fun. Um, so it's a baby pink, but it's like an iridescent type fabric. Um, this reminds me of um, clouds. It's like it's just covered in lots and lots of clouds. I absolutely love it. I'm going to turn it into a puffer jacket. I think I'm going to use the same pattern that I used for my rainbow quilted puffer jacket. And that was from the Great British Sewing Bee book. Um, the inside of the fabric is just white, so I won't need to line it. And then the outside is this amazing iridescent pink. Um, I think they've sold out now, but if they haven't, I will link it down below so you can go and get yourself some. But they did have some other um, beautiful sort of quilted fabrics that you can use to make a puffer jacket as well. Um, but yes, I'm going to make myself another um, puffer jacket. And then I've got quilted fabric I bought last year. I think it was last year or maybe it was earlier on in the year. Um, that's black, that's got tigers all over it. And I've got all the stuff to turn that into a puffer jacket too. Um, I had plans to do it and then the weather got really, really warm. Um, so it's just been sat with all the notions and things ready to go. So October half term plans are to turn this amazing fabric into a puffer jacket and also turn the tiger um, fabric that I've got into a puffer jacket too. So I'm very excited about those. So that was from Fabric Godmother. Um, and then I have been thinking not just about um, Halloween, so I've ordered some fabrics from First for Fabrics to make some cute t-shirts for myself. They've got a few Halloween fabrics. They've got one that's ghosts. They've got one that's um, pumpkin picking. And then they've got one that's got like mummies and things all over it. So I put pictures in of what they look like. That fabric hasn't arrived yet, but when it does arrive, I'm definitely going to turn it into some Tabitha t-shirts or maybe the Freya um, sort of polo neck jumper. I might turn it into that or the South Bank. It's gonna become some kind of long sleeved top um, for the autumn and I'm really excited about that. But then I've also been thinking about Christmas. I don't know if it's too early to say the Christmas word, but I have been thinking about Christmas and I've ordered two pieces of fabric so I can make some Christmas dresses for December. I love wearing Christmas themed clothes. Christmas is probably um, one of my favorite times of the year. I love Halloween um, but I also absolutely love Christmas and I love everything about it. I love being able to wear Christmas jumpers and Christmas dresses. I love how exciting the children are at school. It's just a really lovely joyous um, sort of time of the year. So with that in mind, Fleur et Eurs, um, I can never say that shop correctly, um, but they shared that they had some festive themed fabrics. So I went and had a little look on their website and I spotted two absolutely gorgeous fabrics. Now, coincidentally, they're both on a green background, um, but they're both Christmas themed. I got two and a half meters of each and I'm gonna turn them into a dress of some sort. I think probably the Deer and Doe Myosotis, because that's one of my favorite dresses to sew up in a cotton poplin. Um, but they are just absolutely beautiful fabrics. Look how gorgeous that is. So this has got like um, a street scene on it um, and there's little snowdrops. You've got Santa with the sleigh. Um, you've got Father Christmas with the sleigh. You've got Christmas trees. I just thought it looked absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think this is like a little Christmas market type area with an ice rink and you've got a hot chocolate stand. I just thought it was such a cute fabric that I couldn't resist it. Like the Christmas tree there. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I really love that green background. I think that's going to make a really cute dress. So that's going to become a really cute um, Christmas dress. And I can't wait to get started on that. 
And then the next one, I just fell in love with how cute it was. It's got um, animals all over it. And some of the animals, if not all of them, have got party hats on or party glasses um, or antlers. How fun is that? Now, the classes at school have all got a teddy, like a class teddy that goes home with a bedtime story. Um, and my class is tiger class. Um, we've got penguin class, we've got uh, red squirrel class and we've got elephant class as well. And I thought the children would love it if I wore this to work, which I'm planning to. Because that's where I wear all of my Christmas themed um, sort of dresses and jumpers and things. And there is a tiger there with a Santa hat on. So I'm definitely planning to turn this into a really cute um, sort of Christmas dress ready to wear to work. I might wear it for our Christmas party day. I think that would be really fun. Um, and I just couldn't resist that gorgeous fabric. And again, that beautiful green in the background. That's my favourite shade of green. Um, so I'm really excited about those. Um, and I know what pattern I'm going to use, I think, the Maya Sotis dress, one of my favourite dresses. So that was all of the fabrics. I'm just looking down. Yes, that was all of the fabrics I wanted to share with you. The next thing I wanted to share with you is a pattern. Now, it's a pattern that was brought out ages and ages and ages ago. And I am denied about whether to buy it, but I have just bought it recently because I'm planning to make a backpack. So it's a pattern by Kokowara Crafts, the lovely Anna. It's the Kokowara Crafts hazelnut backpack. I haven't got it in front of me. I've sent it for copy shop printing and I've sent the booklet to be copy shop printed as well with Fabuloso. Um, but I'll put pictures in of what it looks like. There are three different options. You can do a big backpack, medium sized backpack or a mini backpack. Um, the sort of style of it is like a retro old school backpack and then it's got two front pockets and then it's got an internal pocket as well and it is also lined unless you use a PVC fabric or a what was it oil cloth fabric I don't think you have to line it if you use that type of fabric so in terms of fabric recommendations they recommend canvas PVC oil cloth or fake leather and then for the lining fabric they recommend um, a quilting cotton so at the moment, I haven't got a fabric in my stash, but I'm currently looking for um, a canvas type fabric. Um, I've got loads of cotton poplin in my stash, so I don't think I need to go and buy any of that. But I'm just looking for the perfect canvas fabric at the moment. And I think this will be an October half term plan, um, a project, once I've got all of the bits and bobs that you need to sew up the backpack. Um, but I just wanted to let you know in case anyone else is feeling inspired to sew up a backpack. I'm really excited about trying something different and sewing something that isn't like a garment that I can wear. So the next thing I wanted to share with you is a beautiful necklace that I've bought from Smile and Make. So Smile and Make, if you don't know, um, is a beautiful um, sort of acrylic necklace and brooch sort of um, company. Lucy makes the most beautiful um, necklaces and brooches and things. Um, and she runs it as a full-time business and she does different collections that get released at various points and then you can go and buy them. They sell out very quickly. Um, she's shared sneak peeks of some sort of autumnal Christmassy sort of designs as well. There's one that's got this gorgeous little fox in like a snow globe. I cannot wait for that to be released. I'm going to ask if I can get that as a uh, Christmas present. So she released a collection of, it was actually these necklaces, but in a different colorway. And then as part of that, she had some necklaces and I think there were brooches as well that said make a wish that were in like this um, sort of dusky pink with gold sort of accents on. And I treated myself to the most beautiful necklace and the necklace says make a wish. It is absolutely gorgeous. So this is what it looks like. So it says make a wish and then it's got these lovely stars, this beautiful star here and then this gorgeous shiny star at the bottom. I just think it's absolutely beautiful and then it's on a gold um, chain. I just think it's so pretty. Um, it's going to really add a gorgeous little detail to some of my outfits that I wear over the autumn and Christmas and also uh, spring and summer. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I've got quite a collection of necklaces and jewellery um, from Smile and Make because I just think they're all absolutely stunning. So I'll link her shop down below, but I'm sure you follow her on Instagram already. All of her makes are just absolutely beautiful and they're wrapped so beautifully as well. There's so much care that goes into the presentation of the necklaces and brooches when they arrive as well. So I just wanted to share that with you. And this, this was from Smile and Make years ago because she um, used to release collections 
Um, and then she stopped doing it for a while and then she came back and now she does it as a full-time job. Uh, so it means that we get to shop lots and lots of her beautiful necklaces and brooches. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was an autumn challenge, which is running throughout the month of October. And it's being run by the Sewing Warehouse. There's a hashtag, hashtag long sleeves 22. And the challenge is to sew something with long sleeves, like a dress, a jumper, a jacket, a shirt, um, anything really, so long as it's got long sleeves. And there are three steps to the challenge. So post the make to your grid, um, tag the sewing warehouse, and then use the hashtag um, long sleeves 22. We've got until October the 31st to do all of those things. And then the sewing warehouse will choose 10 finalists and share them to their grid. And then we'll be invited to vote for our favorite. And then that's how the winner will be decided. I am sewing lots and lots of things with long sleeves at the moment, including the South Bank jumper and the Marnies, uh, because the weather is getting chillier and chillier. Um, I've got a couple of cardigans that I'm sewing at the moment, so they would be perfect for this challenge. But I just wanted to let you know about that challenge as well. I think there's lots of things running in the next couple of months. I know that there's something coming up in the month of November, which I'll talk about very soon. And then we've also got the Sew Upcycle Challenge, which is being run as well, which I talked about in my last Sunday Sewing Catch Up. So I always like to finish with what I am sewing at the moment. So I have been collabing with the lovely Becky, who is Notes from the Sewing Room. We did our introduction video where we talked about sewing up the um, Grab a Cup Cardi. So this is the pattern. It's the Pattern Emporium Grab a Cup Cardi. And I wasn't sure what fabric to use. I did talk about using the Apple fabric, but as you can tell, I've used that for something different. And then I shared these two fabrics too. Um, so I have decided to go for one of these fabrics, so you'll have to wait for the reveal video because I haven't quite finished that. I was hoping to get it finished for the end of September and I was hoping to have filmed my reveal video as well. But it's just been a super busy time with work and lots of other stuff going on at home, birthdays and just lots of different things. So I haven't actually had a chance to get that sewn up yet. It's half finished, so I'm hoping to get that sewn up in the next week. And then I'll have that video hopefully next weekend for you to show you the reveal. I have got a um, sagebrush top cut out. I think I've talked about this already. Um, but it's in this gorgeous cotton fabric. Um, so I'm really excited about getting that sewn up. I've got the um, dressing gown cut out ready to go for Ruby in the same fabric as my South Bank. So in this gorgeous fabric, I had a little bit left so I could sew that up for her. Um, and then I've got some plans that I'm thinking about for half time. So definitely a puffer jacket. Um, and I've got another fabric that I'm gonna turn into a puffer jacket too. Um, so that's everything at the moment. That's quite a lot um, along with work. But I do like to have lots of things on the go at once. So I'm hoping I'll get a little bit of time um, over the next week to, to do a little bit of sewing and hopefully I can get that cardigan finished as well. So that was everything I wanted to share with you today. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it would be really great if you could hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. I have got a video planned for Wednesday. Um, I thought I was gonna bring out a video last Wednesday that I'd pre-recorded. Annoyingly, I deleted it and I couldn't get the video back. Um, so I need to plan in some time to film that video again. But I do definitely have a video coming out on Wednesday and I will be back next weekend with my Sunday sewing catch up as well. And hopefully my Grab A Cup A Cardi um, reveal vlog um, and hopefully Becky will have hers finished as well. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.